And the same with the women's game. You, you keep on the, the top four or six women's games, you ha you're going through the same trend. You're just, sep you're just separating the rest of the women's game and letting the Six Nations and probably s s some Australian, New Zealand to be there, where the rest are, are, are miles behind. I was going to ask that on the women's game. We see it with the Six Nations. England are fully professional in the women's game, and they play Wales and Scotland, who aren't professional. And it's just, you know, they've, I think they've won the last five Triple Crowns. Um, it doesn't make yeah. sense to me. Imagine if Wales and rugby men's were playing New Zealand every week and, you know, they were losing every game. I imagine oh. the, in, the interest wouldn't grow. What, what would you do about that? Would you ever consider restructuring, revamping the well, women's that's, game? That's, well, that, that's coming to the equal. Again, this comes, if you don't put an investment plan, like, and I've been there with Argentina playing amateurs against professionals, um, there's, if you don't invest and you don't put a, a proper plan in place, there's no way that that won't happen. You're going through the same road. Like you said, if, if, the, if the women's of the England rugby team, I saw them in Lensbury training, and then you, they meet every day, they eat well, they get paid, and then you play against a team that just, gets, uh, just have a couple of, of weeks training, you will never have that equality. You will never have that competitiveness. And it's not good for the England rugby team. And it's not good for... Uh, the Argentinian women's team. It doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, the, 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 the sport doesn't grow and the contracts of the players do, do not grow. And then you have so a very unequal balance and it's not good for the game. Is, 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 that, is that something, if you got elected, you, you would want to revamp? Because in the right now, I think the Six Nations and the women's game, it doesn't really make sense. Like Wales, for my opinion, should be playing, as you say, Spain or someone. And England should be playing New Zealand in a tournament. Because... Like, I understand Six Nations, obviously a European tournament, but the the difference in levels of quality is just. But you massive. have to exactly. You need to. This is the thing. I'm not talking about just taking down the Six Nations. What I'm saying is, you have to think different. You have to be modern. Like you said, if you, if, if if England has to play against uh, New Zealand, Australia, and probably uh, stronger teams, uh, then that, that's great. Uh, Hong Kong playing in the last uh, in the Island World Cup, and I was there. There's no point, you know, it's, yes, it's good for them, but at the end of the day, Hong Kong has to have some plan to arrive to the World Cup being competitive. Uh, what's your favorite type of music? Uh, at the moment, I'm, look, I'm listening to a little bit of Cuban music. Uh, Club Social Buenavista is something that I like, but I like a lot of, I used to love The Clash and, and The Sex Pistols. I was a, a little bit of a, of, of a punk follower really? in my early stages yeah yes 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 i was the what's clash the, was combat rock clash? combat rock was one of the combat rock was one of my favorite albums so yes i, I like the the clash is very well the talking heads i like a lot and um, um, muse now i've been listening I, I love music so muse is somebody i've been following a lot um oh, brilliant uh who else um yeah, I like rock. I, I, the Black Crows, I like them. Um, a little bit more of, a, of an old style, uh, American style. I don't know. I, I, like, I like music a lot. Do, do you see so any I can speak about music a lot. Do, do you see any concerts when you're in, uh, while you're in Buenos Aires? I know lots of big artists come there. Yeah, everyone. I've seen the Rodin. I've seen every band that came through Buenos Aires. I've seen <laughs> it. I, I've, been, I've been with Bono in the, in the, in, in going out with him. I, 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 I really... Uh, Oasis. I went with Carlos Tevez. Uh, we met him in, in, in Manchester. So yeah, I, I, I've been. I love music. Music is something I love. Uh, that, well, Joan Morgan says, "Do you think rugby should be a summer sport in the UK and generally, uh, as if there's a global season?" Uh, he, he's basically saying that you know, in the season, the way it is yeah. in the UK and France, you get lots of muddy matches, and the score is only nine six. I'm sure you know that from your days and stuff. <laughs> say. Um, is that you know it, obviously with players contracts and clubs v unions uh would a global calendar for you make a lot more sense in, in every in every sense well that, that's a very uh, that's a very good question i always thought when i was playing for richmond of bristol looking at the sky when i was training <laughs> and, and saying wouldn't it be great to play in the summer um that it's not so hot uh in the uk even uh, but again, it's, it's just thinking out of the box. I think the global calendar will push us to think that way. I think if we are really, if we are really a, a modern sport, we should be looking at when is the best time to have commercially and to link with the clubs and with the private equity where to, where to put that. And that's how you approach a, 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 an innovative modern uh, plan. 
uh, equal and for everyone. That's how you do it. Looking at the looking at the table with a with a white piece of paper. Say, okay, let's start from scratch. Who and everyone's idea. It's not your idea only. If I think the nation's come, okay, give me your angles. What are you? So that's how you construct a, a, a good blueprint for the game and, and for the next twenty years of the game. Do, do you see going forward Japan staying a power? Because it seems like on paper they they have everything to do that, and it's obviously great for rugby to, to grow the sport. Well, I, I said it in two thousand and seventeen. Uh, you, it's like Argentina in 2008. Uh, you can have a wonderful World Cup and a success, but then if you don't have the cadence of the international game, then the fans that have been engaged, they don't see you again. And they, they, they have other interests. They go and watch baseball. They go and watch other sports. And that's how, how, how intense today the competition is. So, uh, again, you need, to, you, you need to have a landing where you do a World Cup and, and have, give Japan the success it has with more and more inventory. And at the moment, we don't, we don't have that. Uh, why do you think that is? Why hasn't World Rugby, you know, obviously Argentina, I remember the 2007 World Cup, you were part of it. Um, why hasn't that effort or, you know, why, why hasn't it happened basically compared to other because nations? Of, because of the leadership. At that stage, Bernard Lapasset, that was a, a great believer in the global game, just pushed for Argentina from World Rugby to be in, in, in the Southern Hemisphere. And we, we got it. After four years, we got it. Um, the same with, with, we should be doing the same with Japan, and we haven't. Uh, we just, and the Nations Cup was a big example of that, bringing beforehand. So this year, we could have started with a new competition. Uh, this year or next one, it was, was staged, where Japan was going to play in the Rugby Championship and, and Pro Le Fiji. And then you have then you have uh, ups and downs, a good pathway for all the nations. Nothing more fair than that. 